Okay, hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to be uh, discussing some more general properties of the Laplace transform, and we're also going to introduce the inverse Laplace transform. And so just to remind you, the Laplace transform is a transformation of one function into another. So a function of a variable t gets transformed into a function of a variable s, and the exact transformation is just given here on the screen. And we've already seen in the previous video just some Laplace transforms of some, some basic functions, some well-known functions. So for instance, just the constant function f of t equal to 1 has Laplace transform 1 over s. And this table just gives you some more uh, basic examples. And uh, in this video, we'll see a general rule which will allow us to get this table to really calculate a, a wide range of examples. So that rule is going to be just linearity of the Laplace transform. So if you remember from differentiation and integration, um, the power uh, of the subject is that we, we have very general rules which allow us to compute derivatives and integrals. So for instance, the product rule, the sum rule, and so on. Um, and similarly for the Laplace transform, uh, it, we have some general rules. So for instance, uh, if we want to compute the Laplace transform of the sum of two functions f and g, we just need to compute the Laplace transform of one and the Laplace transform of the other and just add them. So we have these two um, these these two very general rules here. So let's see how to use this uh, these two rules on a, a few examples here. So the first example I want to show you is this one here. So we're interested in being able to compute this Laplace transform. So it doesn't immediately. It's not. If I just take a look back at my table here, you'll see that it doesn't immediately form part of one of these functions on the, on the left-hand side here because of the, the square that you can see. So we need to do some work. We need to, we need to manipulate this function into uh, some linear combination of these functions that you see on the left-hand side of the screen here. So let's go and do exactly that. So here, the first thing to do is just to see that if I take the function inside here, e to the t minus e to the negative t here, and I square this. Well, this is uh, very easy to compute. So it's just going to be e to the 2t plus e to the negative 2t minus 2. So because these two functions are equal, so are their Laplace transforms. So if I need to compute the Laplace transform of this uh, function here, Same as just computing the Laplace transform of uh, this linear combination of functions here. And the nice thing is that if I look at this function here on the right hand side, that is going to be of the form uh, in our table. Namely, it's just going to be a sum of exponential functions here. So the, um, we have e to the 2t and e to the negative 2t, and then also a constant. So uh, we have a linear combination here, uh, which you can see where we can calculate the um, Laplace transform of each of each uh, component. So here, this will just be exactly equal to, by our rule of linearity, e to the Laplace transform of e to the 2t, plus the Laplace transform of e to the negative 2t. And now, um, I'm going to add the Laplace transform of negative 2. Okay, good. So let's immediately write out what this is. So the Laplace transform of e to the 2t. So I go back to the table once more, and I see that, OK, well, in the third uh, row here, uh, e to the alpha t is just 1 over s minus alpha. And so nice, I immediately get this Laplace transform just to be uh, 1 over s minus 2. Great. And similarly, uh, the Laplace transform of e to the negative 2t will just be uh, s plus 2, 1 over s plus 2. And now I can add this to the Laplace transform of negative 2. But now negative 2 is not yet immediately in the form of that we saw in the, the table. Um, but it's a constant. And you can see in the first row here, uh, we know what the Laplace transform of 1 is. So since one is equal to two, negative since two, negative two is equal to one times negative two, uh, we we can immediately write out uh, what the the plus transform of negative two is. It's just negative two times the plus transform of one, and we just said that's equal to negative two over s. So great, we have here um, just negative two over s. Okay, very nice. So um, linearity together with our table allowed us to calculate. Uh, this example of the surplus transform here. 
Okay, so let's see another example here. Um, so the next example will be slightly more uh, tricky. So here we asked to calculate the Laplace transform of cos squared of t. And again, if I just look at my table, you'll see here cos squared doesn't appear anywhere. So we don't we don't actually have a Laplace transform of uh, cos uh, squared in this table. But perhaps we can manipulate cos squared into a form which we can use this table. So let's see if we can let's see if we can do that. Um, so the first thing to see is that because of the uh, double angle formula, so we have cos two t is equal to cos squared t minus sine squared t. Um, because we have this, one can manipulate um, to solve for the cos squared here. Um, also replacing sine squared by 1 minus uh, cos squared, so then solving for the cos squared. We can write cos squared purely in terms of cos 2t. And so I'll do, do that immediately. I'll just write that uh, cos squared t is exactly equal to just a half 1 plus cos 2t. And here we can apply the Laplace transform. And the right hand side here is going to be much easier to calculate um, than uh, the left hand side, at least directly. Okay, and why is that? Because we have on the right hand side here a linear combination of functions which we know. We know how to compute the Laplace transform of the constant 1, and we know how to compute the Laplace transform of cos 2t here. So immediately, this turns out to just be equal to. Um, this linear combination, so it'll be a half times the Laplace transform of 1 plus the Laplace transform of cos 2t and um, close the bracket here and you see that this is just can be read directly from the table, so if I look at my table here Laplace transform of 1 in the first row is just 1 over s, Laplace transform of cos 2t is going to be simply s over s squared plus k squared, but k in this in this case is 2, so this is just going to turn out to be exactly uh, 4. So k squared will be 4. So we just get here a half times 1 over s, that's the Laplace transform of 1, plus the tra Laplace transform of cos uh, 2t, which is just s over s squared plus 4, and so we have, have this formula here. Um, okay, great, so if you want to simplify this a bit further, you'll just get s squared plus 2 all over s cubed plus 4s. And so that again shows you that using just our table, we're able to calculate um, Laplace transforms of functions that don't appear on, on, our, on our table. OK, good. So let's look at the next um, concept. So the next concept um, is, is called the inverse Laplace transform. And that's just given here. So if we're given a function of s, we may ask the question, is there a function of t whose Laplace transform is equal to that function of s? So given this function here, capital F of s, we say that the inverse Laplace transform of that function, it is the function f of t such that the Laplace transform of f is just equal to capital F. Okay? And when we have that, um, we, just, we, we can write uh, this statement uh, here. So this statement, the Laplace transform of small f being capital F, can be interchangeably written as the inverse Laplace transform of f being equal to small f. Okay, great. So this is the concept of the inverse Laplace transform. It's actually defined completely in terms of the Laplace transform. Uh, there's also some other general rules which one must uh, have here uh, for the this inverse Laplace transform to be well defined. But we don't get into that here. We just um, we assume that uh, this is a well defined definition. Okay, good. So this is the inverse Laplace transform. The inverse Laplace transform of a, of a function capital F of s is the small function, uh, sorry, it is, is the function small f of t such that the Laplace transform of f is equal to capital F. So whenever we have this, we have this. Okay. So that means that our table from before, we can immediately take our table, uh, let me just get that table, so the, the table from before, which is given here, immediately tells us some inverse Laplace transforms. 
inverse Laplace transform of each of the functions on the right here is just equal to the function on the left. So that's why we have this table here, which is just giving us the inverse, the corresponding inverse Laplace transforms. And now, uh, also, because we have linearity um, of the Laplace transform, and how, because of how the inverse Laplace transform is defined, we can actually calculate, um, sorry, we actually have the inverse Laplace transform being linear. And so we can use it together with our table to compute some examples. So let's use uh, this general idea to compute the Laplace transform of this function here on the screen. So here, um, we, if I look at this function uh, 1 over s squared plus 2, it's not immediately in the form of um, a function which I can be read directly off the table. So we have to kind of massage it into such a function. So if I look here, um, the closest looking function is something like this here. So the k uh, over s squared plus k squared. Um, so how can we get this? I mean, that looks pretty close. So let's see, how can we get our function here, 1 over s squared plus 2 to get to look closer. Well firstly we need we need to be adding to s squared a number squared and of course that's going to have to be root 2 squared because we can't change the function right. So our first step in getting closer is just going to be to rewrite um, our function in this form. Good so we're one step closer but now the only issue is that at the top here we need a k and that's just because then we'll get exact resemblance to this kind of function here. So we can do that also very easily by noting that 1 is just root 2 over root 2. So this function here just becomes exactly 1 over root 2 times uh, root 2 all over s squared plus root 2 squared. And now, because the two functions are equal, their inverse Laplace transforms will be equal. And so we have that the inverse Laplace transform in question is just equal to this one. And I have to multiply this whole thing by root 2. So here I'm using linearity of the inverse Laplace transform. Let me actually just do this in one step. So um, I do, let me. I have the one over root two here, um, but the linearity of the inverse Laplace transform, that's this, uh, this rule here, allows me to pull out that constant. So I get one over root two times the inverse Laplace transform of root two over s squared plus root two squared. And here, this is now I can read this exactly straight off the table. This is exactly um, the situation up here with k equal to root 2. So that means that my um, function is just going to be here, sine root 2t. Nice. So this is really the general uh, thing here. So we, we have uh, a table and we have some general rules and we can use the table together with the general rules to calculate um, the inverse Laplace transforms just in the same way we would for Laplace transforms. Okay, so let's look at one more example here. Um, so the next example is slightly more complicated, but it illustrates nicely a general, um, a general technique here. So we have now, um, again, we, we have this, this function on the interior here, which is not resembling any of the functions in our in our table but we can somehow manipulate this function into into being very close to that table uh, so uh, let's take a look at this function so we have 8 over s cubed minus 4s here and let's just take a look at our table just, just to go up it one more time so if I look at this table here um, the, this table only allows me to have things like 1 over s minus alpha or an s squared. The highest power will always be uh, an s squared, at least in this table. So how to use that? Well, I have to, try and, I have to try and decompose this function into a sum of functions whose denominators will have powers uh, less than 2. 
So I can do that here. I can I can write this function as s times uh, s squared minus 4. And I can go one step further and realize that this is also just s times s plus 2s minus 2, just the difference of squares here. And um, now the technique here, which is, a, which is the general one, is that we can decompose this uh, into partial fractions. Um, so we can, we can find a partial fraction decomposition of this, this function here. And so the way to do that uh, is that we want to find the A and find the B and find the C, which make this equation hold. And I leave it to you to, to solve that. Um, it's, it's relatively straightforward. But it turns out that um, you can write this 8 over s cubed minus 4s uh, just as 1 over uh, s minus 2 minus 2 over s uh, plus 1 over s plus 2. And here, this is the main point. This function here, it is just a linear combination of functions that appear in our table. Why? Because they're actually all just they're quotients um, with the term like that looks like this. Okay, great. So um, that means if we apply inverse Laplace transform here, we can so the inverse Laplace transform of our function eight over s cubed minus four s. It's just going to be the inverse Laplace transform of each of these functions here independently. So the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over um, s uh, minus 2 is just going to be e to the 2t. Now, minus 2 over s is the same thing as minus 2 times 1 over s. And the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is just going to be um, 1. So we're just going to have minus 2 here. And then the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2 is nothing other than just e uh, to the power of negative 2t. Okay, so in the next video we'll see some more general properties of inverse Laplace transform and also how to use this to solve initial value problems. Thank you.